What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're gonna to talk about installing recessed cans. This is a new construction can, meaning there's no sheetrock up on anything. All you have is wood frame uh, and you take this thing and hammer these nails into a piece of wood and hammer these ones in and it stays up in the ceiling. First thing that you do is match this little flange up with the truss above you. And it's really important because sheetrock's gonna go here. It's important that you keep it flat. You don't wanna be hanging down like this because when they put sheetrock up, you're gonna be in the way of the sheetrock. Then you're gonna hammer each one of these in place. I typically will hammer both on one side, on one truss, I'll hammer those first and then I'll extend these out and I'll hammer them on the other side. I make sure that the can is pushed all the way up against the truss and then I'll nail it in. Then I will extend the legs out and push this all the way to the other side and hammer those in because that ensures that everything stays relatively straight and then you can move the can to wherever you need it. Now there are gonna be situations where these legs are too long. Sometimes a can has to go in a very specific area and you've got two trusses that are like 10 inches apart. Both the inside and outside piece have notches and you can actually cut these, cut them down to the size you need and smash them back together. These legs are typically about 24 inches wide. So sometimes you might have trusses that are like this far apart. So what do you do? Well, you have to block for that. You have to put a couple more two by fours to bring it out to give yourself something to nail to. Now, once you've got this up in a ceiling, you wanna make sure that you tighten the screws. Most cans come with screws on at least one side, but this screw secures this leg so that the can can't slide when it's up in the ceiling. If you ever lose a screw or you don't have one around, what I do is take my clines and I just pinch uh, every single one of these tabs. And I will make sure through a different means that that thing's not gonna move anywhere. Another thing when you're working with cans, when you're putting them up, I will put this junction box on every single one of them facing the same way. And I'm gonna make sure that wherever I'm putting them, I flip it to the side that has the most room for me to work. The other thing I do if it's not in a line, if there's four cans together, is I point the junction boxes at each other. That's just less wire that you have to use and you're running in between kind of the shortest points possible. So once you've got your can up in the ceiling, you're gonna have to run wire to it. And you wanna make sure that the wire is secure. A couple of different options of securing the wire. It's got these half inch knockouts that you could put a Romex connector in. You could put a half inch bushing in, any kind of approved method of securing the wire into this thing so it can't be pulled out. Um, but then there's also these little tiny tabs here that will fit one piece of Romex or one wire. There's these kind of metal tabs, so when you slide the wire in there, it keeps that wire from being able to be pulled out. So whatever you do, just make sure that the wire is secured to this box. This is act that's actually code. Um, the next thing is once you leave here, you need to staple within 12 inches of this junction box. That's code as well. Once I've come out of here and stapled it, I leave a loop probably about an extra 12 inches. So if you leave an extra loop, you can move this thing you know, in any direction, two feet in any direction, and you still got the wire there. You don't gotta scrap all that wire and then waste even more wire and rerun it all. Now, when you're bringing your wires into the can, make sure that you don't strip too much wire out. You don't want breakers tripping because you've got copper wire exposed and it's touching the metal and it blows up every time you turn the, turn the light on. So uh, strip out very little wire, I'd say like, Three eighths of an inch is really all you need. These from the factory, the insulation goes all the way into this Wago. This is called a Wago. So yours should be the same way. There just shouldn't be any copper sticking out. The other thing that's really important to do on cans is these are manufactured in mass, in quantity. So what I do is when I put a new can in, I actually push these in all the way. Once you've installed all of them, pull a laser out, so you can see, you can line up with one can perfectly, but you can also line up with the one over there and the one down and just make sure that everything is perfectly straight. Take a laser and set that thing on the ground and shoot up a line all the way down that hallway. You'd be surprised at how many times you are off like a quarter inch or a half inch side to side on all of these and they need to be perfectly straight. That's my tips for recessed cans. 